The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. The anti-war peace group Code Pink, along with a coalition of 50 other organizations, is holding a two-day People's Tribunal on the Iraq War. It will be held on the 1st and 2nd of December this year, and we here at The Real News will be live streaming it for you. The tribunal will be an examination of the evidence used to legitimate the invasion of Iraq, where an estimated million lives have been lost. The tribunal will also be hearing testimonies on the cost of the invasion and occupation thus far. According to estimates at the National Priorities Project, the Iraq war was expected to cost about $60 billion. That was bad enough, but it now looks like its true cost will exceed $820 billion thus far. But Joseph Stieglitz and others put the long-term costs at between $3 and $5 trillion. Joining us now to speak about the upcoming People's Tribunal on the Iraq War are two very special guests, Jody Evans and Raw Ed Jarar. Jody is a co-founder and co-director of Code Pink. She has been a human rights and environmental justice activist for many years, Jody served in the administration of California Governor Jerry Brown, so it's a former administration. She has published two books and a number of documentaries, including the Oscar-nominated The Most Dangerous Man in America, about whistleblower Daniel Ellsberg and the Pentagon Papers. Jody, good to have you with us. And Raw Ed Gerard has worked with the American Friends Service Committee since 2005 as their government relations manager in Washington, D.C. Raw Ed is an Iraqi Palestinian who was born in Baghdad and raised in Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and Iraq. He studied architecture at the University of Baghdad and the University of Jordan, where he specialized in post war reconstruction in Iraq. I thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, Germany. So, Jody, let me start with you. Explain what exactly this tribunal is about and why it is Code Pink organizing it, and uh, what do you hope to accomplish? Well, we were looking out at the insane election and trying to figure out what we could create post election that would be useful in both healing and building the anti war movement we're going to need for 2017. And uh, the Iraq war had kind of just dropped out of sight while at the same time, it's still raging. And it seemed that we needed to tell the truth. If we're going to confront what's happening in the Middle East, we have to come back and see that lies are what always take us to war and that the costs are innumerable and they come home to the streets of the US, even though we don't recognize them in that way. So this was an opportunity to pull together everything that we've lived through in the last 14 years and tell it as one story. And we know the facts that you just said, the number of people and the amount of money, but we want to make these have meaning to you. Uh, we want to bring up, you know, what did that like look like to the CIA, to a general, to somebody, uh, we've got a, a guy testifying who is the editor at Fox News, who facilitated the lies from the White House at Fox News. We have people inside the CIA that are going to talk about what it looked like there. You know, of course, we have Ambassador Wilson, who's going to talk about his wife losing her job and him, you know, coming back with the truth and it being hidden. Uh, there's just so many stories that we'll pull together that bring us back into what did we live through and why, you know, what's happening now in the Middle East and what led us to that. And the costs, the costs come home to the militarization in our city, to the poverty, to the racism, and they're never named that way. So uh, it's, it's a process, but also we've been so fractured as an anti-war movement for many reasons, and we needed to come together to heal and to build our communities. So one of the tools for the coalition is that we've got a, a page on our website that helps people locally understand what the costs are to their community. And just coming together and naming them is an important way to re-inspire and re-engage them.
And uh, Jody, um, there are many actors involved in this war, um, and especially those who initiated it. Um, some claim that, of course, they were uh, uh, carrying on this war and started this war illegally. Is there an effort on the part of the tribunal to sort of name those uh, people and hold them accountable? Well, the call from the tribunal is to President Obama, who's just ignored what happened, and it's for a commission on truth and accountability. But the naming will happen by each testifier because the naming includes, you know, members of Congress that turn their backs, you know, including uh, Secretary Hillary Clinton, who, you know, we came back from Iraq and told her exactly what was happening and that there were no weapons of mass destruction. There are members of Congress that were told the same thing and still voted us to war. So there's many players. So it's not to point fingers. It's to open up the story so we can witness and call on those that have the, you know, are imbued with the powers to call a commission on truth and accountability. I mean, for me, it was like, I fail if we at Code Pink don't do this. Obama fails if he doesn't call on the commission. All right, and Ra, Ed, I want you to give us a personal account of what this kind of a tribunal will mean in terms of uh, uh, the country that you come from and in terms of the community of people um, that is affected by this war. And of course, um, you've been with the American Friends Service Committee uh, for years now uh, working on this particular issue in Washington. Um, the, the uh, necessity of something like this for the kind of healing that people need to undergo now. It's important to me uh, both as an Iraqi and as an American. Uh, I am a U.S. citizen and uh, a tax, tax dollar, uh, that my, my tax dollars go to fund uh, many of uh, these uh, crimes that have been committed uh, in Iraq. So it's really important for me as an American to, to see accountability and transparency uh, and hold those uh, U.S. Uh, politicians and uh, others who participated in the war, hold them accountable. But also as an Iraqi, it's very important uh, to uh, look at what happened to Iraq in the last 25 years uh, and come to a point of um, understanding the players behind behind what happened and hold them accountable and most importantly end what has been going on because unfortunately when we talk about this war we're not talking about a war that happened in the past we're talking about an ongoing war this war started back in 1991 and it has it, it's still going on uh, just check the news today there are more attacks going on there is a new war going on uh, around Mosul. Uh, the U.S. is bombing Iraq once again. Um, we have never stopped bombing Iraq in the last 25 years. Uh, we're bombing Iraq once again, and we are funding and training proxy groups who are committing atrocities uh, in Iraq. So, it's, so you see, like looking at this, um, on, on, uh, 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 looking very closely at the Iraq war, it's not only important. Um, for um, historic reasons, for holding you know, people accountable in the past, it's also important for us to find the path forward for ending the U.S. intervention in Iraq once and for all, uh, and for putting Iraq on the, on the right path moving forward. So I think you know, th there are obviously a few other uh, tribunals that happened in the past. I personally testified in an Iraq war tribunal uh, that took place in Kuala Lumpur uh, a decade ago. Uh, there was uh, another one in Europe, uh, uh, you know, the Brussels Tribunal, and, and there was a winter soldier event here in, in the U.S. where U.S. troops came, come, came forward. Uh, this one has particular importance because it's coming at the end of the Obama administration. And President Obama promised to be the president who would end the Iraq war. Uh, he promised to be the president who would um, make right uh, and, and uh, change U.S. policy in Iraq, and until now he did not. The Iraq war is still going on, and he did not uh, hold anyone responsible. So, as Jody was saying, we are calling on the Obama administration to take this final step before they depart, 
before pre the president leaves office, we're hoping that he will take this one last opportunity um, uh, to make what uh, what he promised and uh, to take steps towards uh, holding um, uh, everyone who participated in crimes in Iraq uh, accountable. Now, Raid, um, earlier offline we were talking about the real cost of this war, and here I mean the cost in terms of the lives lost and also the financial costs incurred uh, by the United States and, of course, various other governments and Iraq itself as well, all of which the tribunal um, expects to expose in further detail. Now, give us an estimate uh, first on how many lives have been lost. Um, and I know there is some conflicting figures out there, but if you could provide us some clarity, then, of course, get into the actual cost of this war to date and what it may be costing us over the long term. Yeah, I, I led one of the earlier um, casualty surveys in Iraq. Uh, I was the country director with CIVIC, uh, the campaign for innocent victims in conflict. And we collected uh, names and stories of Iraqis who were killed uh, during the first uh, 100 days of the invasion. And now, of course, if you go back to the 1990s, uh, there were hundreds of thousands of Iraqis who were killed uh, either uh, as a direct result to U.S. military interventions and bombing or because of the lack of medicines and food, uh, because of the brutal sanctions that were imposed on Iraq. In 2003, the estimates vary for uh, the, the exact number of Iraqis, but where we stand now, there are three figures that seem that they are contradictory at face value, but they're actually not. They, they complement each other. Uh, the lowest figure is the uh, names of Iraqis that we know have been killed uh, in, in the last um, you know, a few decades. And, and the names uh, are not that much. We're talking about a few tens of thousands of documented names uh, that we know of. Not everyone has been documented. Uh, now, that, so that figure is around in the tens of thousands. Then you have another figure for the reported casualties. Uh, Iraqbodycount.org is w one of the leading organizations that has been keeping figures for the reported casualties. So these are people who were killed and then their uh, death was reported in the media. And that figure is around 250,000, quarter a million uh, of people who were killed and reported in the media. And the, the last and highest figure is the most um, comprehensive one, and that is the full estimated number. So that is based on a sampling inside Iraq to figure out how many people were killed. And that figure is over one million. Over one million Iraqis were killed. Of course, there are many other millions who were injured or displaced because of the war. So these numbers are really huge and staggering when you think about a country of 30 million, where 1 million Iraqis were killed in the last um, decade or, or, or 15 years, this is equivalent of us losing 10 million Americans in uh, 10 or 15 years because of uh, war and foreign intervention. 10 million. I mean, imagine the, the impact of these numbers of casualties uh, on Iraqis. Now, regarding the figures of the financial losses, um, there are no estimates inside Iraq uh, for the actual losses. Um, everyone assumes it's in the trillions. I mean, just think about how much money Iraq have made out of uh, oil in the last 14 years. Iraq has made almost $1.5 trillion out of oil sales in the last um, 14 years, and this money has gone. Like, you can't really point to uh, many projects that have been built in the country because it, it was stifled to corruption and, um, you know, fake projects that never happened. But if you actually look at the level of infrastructure destruction in Iraq, it's really hard to estimate. And that is a question that we've been bringing up even with the United Nations, because the United Nations helped estimate the damages that happened in Kuwait after the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait of 1990. So there is the United Nations Compensation Committee, UNCC, that helped estimate the damages, but they never did the same for the U.S. invasion of Iraq. Now, from a U.S. perspective, uh, we know that the uh, cost for us, U.S. taxpayers, 
has been in the trillions when it comes to projecting the full cost over time. Uh, so there are a few studies out there, and uh, there are estimates that the actual cost of war, when you add up all of the veteran uh, expenses in the next few decades, when you add in all of the interest on debt that we borrowed uh, to, to spend on this war, when you add everything up, uh, the cost will end up being three or four trillion dollars uh, over the next few decades. Uh, so although the, the, the documented cost so far is um, less than a trillion, uh, but uh, when you add uh, in the, the future cost, it will, it will be really shocking. And unfortunately, many future generations will be paying for this war. Speaking of future generations, uh, Jody, um, the effects of this war that's continuing is broad and deep. So many people are affected uh, by it, and they will continue to be affected by it. I'm reminded of an article that Barbara Koppel had done in the Washington Spectator called Irradiated Iraq, where uh, she looked specifically at the um, radiation and the impact that has had on women and, of course, the children that the women are bearing and uh, the deformities of uh, birth and defects of children in, uh, in the war zone itself. This is just one example. Give us a sense of the different uh, communities and people that have been affected by this war thus far. Well, we have two testifiers on that issue, um, both the fact that we knew, and, and I was there and can witness, uh, even Sean Penn went and brought that story back before the um, invasion, uh, that our use of depleted uranium from 91 had horrible effects on births of children. So we brought that back as an excuse, you know, as a, a caution not to do it again. It was again used and it's continuing to be used. And the birth defects in some of those areas, including Fallujah, are horrific. And those will be presented at the tribunal. But not just that. The person who's been doing the investigation decided to go look at the soldiers that were also stationed at the base around there. And they, too, those soldiers in the United States, their children are experiencing the effects of depleted uranium. This is so shameful. I mean, we know what happens, we know what it does to life, and that it continues you know, to affect genetically. Shame on the United States for doing this. Um, but you know, there's, we aren't even talking about the refugees we're talk, or what has happened to destabilize the Middle East. The effects of these lies are what we are going to do on day two is like, what are the costs of these lies? Day one is really the lies. And Ray had, um, talked about the other tribunals. We have the, all the tribunals will be presenting their transcripts, including the IVAW, the Winter Soldier. But, you know, one of the things that really spurred me on to do this was the Colin Powell was heard saying, thank God for Brexit, because it smothered the Chilcot Report. And the Chilcot Report is a report done for the government of the UK that really exposes these lies, and not only that, but the illegality of the Iraq War. Uh, another report was done in Holland. The Dutch government did it, and they did a long study showing also the illegality of the Iraq War. We have a lawyer coming from Costa Rica who will talk about the lawsuit he won against the United States because having been coerced into the coalition of the willing uh, by literal blackmail and, and lies also. And there are many countries that continue to have lawsuits against the United States for being uh, coerced into the coalition of the willing that cost all of them a lot of money, and that money is not even used in how we add up the costs of this war. Um, so, but, you know, the day one is, is just so that we can remember also that we continue to be taken to war on lies and what that looks like from all the different angles, because those lies continue now as we get, you know, talked, as there's the no-fly zone that, you know, and the first lie of the no-fly zone is that it's in some way a peace act when it's really a war act. Um, so we just want to be able to, like, as we see the drums of war happening in the um, new administration that Hillary Clinton's putting together, we have to bring these lies back up so that we don't become victim of them again. And then also the costs that 
the, the costs are so layered. I mean, we're going to have a hundred people talking about these costs, not as numbers, but what they are to the life of a human being. And that, um, and just the fact that we can think that there's another person's life that we can cost that, that even Obama can have these kill Tuesdays where he can decide that someone's life is meaningless and he can take it. And we've got to be able to stop normalizing violence from the top down to, you know, what's happening in our streets. And we want the tribunal to that to be what the tribunal is doing. We have to stop normalizing violence. All right, Jody, and uh, give us uh, just a last footnote on where people can find out more information about the tribunal and how they can participate. Sure, I just want to leave you with, you know, we need to be able to tell the truth as passionately and effectively as they tell their lies. We want to invite everyone to participate. You can go to iraqtribunal.org. There are six ways to participate, and the first one should be just signing uh, the email to Obama to create this Commission on Truth and Accountability. But if you're part of a coalition, if you're part of a community, join in, bring your community together, figure out the lies. It'll make you smarter about a war. And um, we're looking always for more partners and coalition members. We want this to be a tool. We offer it as a tool to not only the anti-war movement, but to all the movements that we're all affected by these wars. Uh, the planet is affected. Um, our neighborhoods are affected. The militarization of the police is a, is a direct result. So we invite everyone to participate. All right, Roy, Jody, I thank you both for joining us today. And we look forward to the tribunal coming up in December. Thank you. Thank you, Sharma. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.